Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for the full moon uh, in Libra. And it's happening on March 31st at my dad's birthday. Um, 8.37 a.m. Eastern, times are very... Now that I've got the right chart out, I was looking at a completely different chart. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Mercury's going to be going... Mercury's not retrograde yet, but it's going to be by the time we get there. So I'm probably feeling that a little already. <laughs> but here it is, the full moon in Libra. So, let's just look at the Libra energy to start with. You know, Libra and its ruler is Venus. And so it's going to be a focus, a concentration on the Libra energy. The Libra energy is partnership. It's um, kind, considerate uh, toward others. Seeing the other person's point of view, taking into account the other person's point of view. Uh, wanting to achieve balance, wanting to achieve harmony. Um wanting to kind of make everybody happy big focus even though it's occurring i'm this is the flat wheel oh, i didn't even do a flat wheel I, I guess i did the actual wheel usually i do the flat wheel we're gonna have to roll with this i'm, I'm not gonna stop the tape and rerun the chart i must have forgot to put it as um the zero aries chart but it does rule the seventh house and in the flat wheel with you know which is the with the aries if you don't know what the flat wheel is that's how i usually do these charts like aries make it so it's all zero 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 but it rules the seventh house and you can see that over here seventh house libra venus and so it rules partnerships it rules the other people so this is what we are going to try to be this is what we'll be dealing with uh during this time it's squaring saturn and squaring mars so yikes oh and saturn and mars are together over here i see yeah so we've got a saturn conjunct mars that's some pretty uh, this labor energy is really going to be needed at this time i would say because that's some pretty heavy stuff there saturn and mars and capricorn that's like all work and no play let's get serious let's get down to business saturn's got the plan mars is going to hire the workers and, and accomplish the plan and do the work and we're you know Hopefully they're working together as a team. Because Saturn and Mar Mars working together as a team is so formidable. I mean, that could be, they could move mountains, you know, Saturn and Mars together. But also Saturn and Mars together, it, um, natal, you know, if you take out the, that they're both in Capricorn, that's a square. Those are cardinal squares. Saturn rules a Capricorn and Mars rules um, Aries. And that would create a square. And they are squaring uh the nodes here. We've got a big T-square going on. We've got the Sun, the Moon, because it's a full moon. Mercury's in there too with the Sun. And it's squaring off with this Saturn-Mars uh, conjunction. Boy, the Libra energy is really going to be... I mean, I'm trying to look at the bright side, but really, that, that's some real conflicting stuff. That's the... That Pluto Uranus square that we were dealing with for several years there, that was all that, was all that energy, you know, similar. That was in the signs of, you know, um, Pluto and Capricorn and Uranus and Aries, which is still in a wide orb going on. So, and that's when many people in the United States, we were fighting over politics and the presidents and the elections and, you know, everybody's in an uproar. So some of that could resurface. If we're going to be really honest about it, some of that might resurface at this time. The Libra energy, hopefully, is going to just pull it all together. You know, in that time uh, when that was going on, the Pluto-Uranus square, we, Jupiter was still down here in Libra. So we had Jupiter um, in Libra. I think it's going to harken back to those times um, a lot. Let's take a look. Let's, uh, let's not talk about some time and we don't even know when it is. Let me just do a quick uh, scan of the ephemeris here. I think that was, you know, it was definitely like 2016, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, was, was it in 15? It's probably in 14 even when Uranus was a little... Yeah, it was in, it was in 19, 19, not 1915. <laughs> it was 2015. 2015 and 16 a lot, and I think a little bit in 17. Okay, so that, well, Jupiter was in Libra in 2017. So 2015 through 2017, struggles and conflicts that we were going through, changes that were emerging at that time, we could have a glimpse of this again. 
Hopefully with the Libra moon shining the light, because a full moon shines the light, illuminates the sector or the placement that it's in. It's, it's in that Libra energy. So hopefully that's going to be, um, you know, finding solutions, finding peace. I first, Just for the hell of it, I want to look up 1915 since I said that. Uh, I think that was probably around the time Uranus was in Aries before. But just sometimes when these things just slip out, they have relevance, and I like to look them up. Because the universe, you know, so many times these random things turn out to be something. Uh, I know, even so even though this is an astrology port, you know, I do... Um, this isn't really catching the whole wheel, is it? I do rely on my intuition and the psychic energy a lot. Now, that's when Uranus was in Aquarius, and it's a home sign. Let me just let me just go in June of 2015, or now I'm saying 20, we're 1915. Jupiter was in Pisces, Saturn was in Cancer, Uranus was in Aquarius, Neptune was in Cancer, and Pluto was in Cancer. Huh. We had a big lineup in Cancer with Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto in 1915. Now I believe any history buffs out there, anybody who feels like looking something up, you know, what was going on in the world in 1915? Probably World War One, right? But here's the interesting point to me is from an astrology standpoint, just strictly astrology. So we've got this cardinal cross here, right? I'm getting chills on my legs, so this is something. I don't even if I don't know what it is or figure out what it is. <laughs> during this reading, there's something here to ruminate or chew on, okay? Um, so we got this cardinal square. What are the four cardinal signs? Aries, Libra, Capricorn, and Cancer. The missing element in the, to make this all four cardinal signs and a big uh, grand cross or, is the element of Cancer. And in 1915, we had Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto in Cancer. So there's something to that. Where were the nodes at that time? The nodes were in Aquarius and Leo. Okay. So that's not, I thought maybe it was, you know, wouldn't it be crazy if the nodes were in <laughs> here again and the, and the cross was this way, but that's not the case. So anyways, um, you know, the cardinal signs. Speaking of the cardinal signs, you know, we, we've just moved into the cardinal ingress or the, you know, there's, there's four times a year we change season and we always change season on these cardinal signs. Whenever the sun moves into this cardinal sign, whether it's Capricorn, Aries, Cancer, or Libra, it's the time that the seasons change. And I'm offering a, a reading on that, the Equinox reading related to your chart. I'm going to talk about it later, but do check it out if you're interested. It'll be available for a limited time. Um, but back to this. So this change of season thing. I feel that there's a lot of change with this. I really do feel like this could be a time, because that's what the Uranus-Pluto square was all about. It was struggling for change, struggling for change. And I, I hopefully, at, at its highest level, at its most positive path that it could manifest, the Libra full moon will allow solutions for peace, solutions to solve our differences, to solve where we square off. Uh, offer a solution because that's that's Libras are big on that. Libras are the um, what do you call it? Uh, the ambassadors. I'm, here's you know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing people shaking hands and I'm hearing peace treaties. So that would be a, a lovely, beautiful way for this to manifest. Maybe um, oh, the nodes were in Leo and Aquarius. Did I just say that? The nodes are in Leo and Aquarius again. This isn't the nodes. Jeez, I'm sorry. Maybe sometimes it's better if I do review these. <laughs> Do do a little, I just open them up and go, you know, um, but yeah, but it was the opposite. Oh, this is crazy. I got to go. I'm sorry. I'm losing. Finish that thought. Vic. Okay. I saw a, a vision of people shaking hands and peace treaty. And I, some, one of them is dressed in some kind of a costume, almost like the Pope would wear. Maybe the Pope's going to facilitate some sort of agreement somewhere. I mean, I don't know. I'm not even sure it's the Pope, but check this out, man. So here's this grand, oops, here's this T-square. What was missing? The thing that was missing was the other side of this. The other side of Capricorn. So there's a T-square and it looks like this. Let's make it, because this doesn't really draw it that way. So it looks like this. Okay. And in 1915, it would have looked uh, like this. In the spring of 1915, it would have looked like this. Okay. Because instead of Capricorn, it's opposite. There were big planets in Cancer. Okay, and Pluto was in Cancer, and it's it's opposite. Pluto's in Capricorn now, so it would have looked like this. Okay, so then check this out. The nodes, um, 
for some reason I was thinking this is the nodes, uh, but the nodes, check this out. The south node today is in Aquarius and the north node is in Leo. In 1915, the north node was in uh, Aquarius and the south node was in Leo. So that was also flipped. Isn't that crazy? There's got to be some correlation somewhere. So um, I'm, I'm not going to stop and look it up right now, but history buffs or somebody want to look up what was, I know, probably World War I, right? There's got to be some correlation to uh, 19, let's go even further. Let's go to the spring of 1915 and the Libra full moon. I should run that chart, I, I mean, I can't do it right now, but let's go, let's, when was the full moon in, in Leo, I mean Libra? That the full, are you shitting me? Oh my God. The full moon in Libra in 1915 was on March 31st. Get the hell out of here. This is too crazy. I love it. So there's some crazy... I'm getting chills all over. There is some crazy correlation uh, to that. And actually, at that point in time, Saturn had not moved into Cancer yet. It was still in Gemini. But Neptune and Pluto were in Cancer. The other thing is uh, Jupiter was in Pisces. Uh, there was a lot of Pisces going on in that chart. There, on that day, there would have. Mercury was in Pisces. Mars was in Pisces. Jupiter was in Pisces. So, thinking of, of Pisces and thinking of um, Cancer as opposed to Capricorn, you could say it, it's a kinder, gentler approach. You know, that's, that's what came to mind. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I don't have to be so cautious with this thing. It's not quite... There we go. How's that? Um... It was a kinder, gentler world. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. So I know this is way out there, but that's how we roll with these readings. <laughs> you know, we just let spirit take us where it's going to take us. But there's uh, definitely some correlation to that 1915. I'd love to hear your inputs. Please do leave them in the comments. I mean, after I finish this, I'll probably be looking at some stuff up myself, but it, it's too disruptive to stop. And I don't have my other computer here. I would just have to change. So I'm not going to do it. Okay, so yeah. I'm pretty sure there was war going on in World War I or something like that. Um, but anyway, so it's about conflict resolution. That's what I just heard. I'm hearing pact, the word pact, you know, making a pact. And yeah, pro could be on the world stage. I, I hope that it would be on the world stage. And I think there's huge potential to that because I definitely see, I think it's the Pope or somebody dressed like that. And it does feel like it's in Europe. And I do see them shaking hands. And I'm oh, sorry about that. One thing after another, isn't it? Um, I do see them shaking hands. and uh, But we can bring it down. Bring it down a notch. Bring it down to the real world or our personal lives. And, and um, you know, make a pact, make a peace treaty with somebody you know. Or even, you know, on Uranus, with the because uh, Uranus is still in the, in the mix with the square and the Pluto and the nodes in Uranus, you know. Um, you know, how many of us have gotten into fights with people that aren't even like really like in social media over all this crap right over our politics and over this and that and being divisive and um let it go i've been i've been really working on that myself you know i've been really working on just letting that self that stuff go if i see something in my feed and I, i'm not going to comment back i'm not going to feel the fire don't feed the fire look at all this aries energy this is the fire Libra doesn't going to uh, feed the fire, you know, and um, I've said this before, but, and, and it, it goes on many levels. It doesn't have to be always us against them, you know. There's some things that can't we all agree on? That's very much a Libra thing. Are there some things that everybody can agree on, you know, um, that everybody should agree on, that people should have enough food to eat, or we shouldn't kill, you know. I think there's some things, it doesn't have to be, well, they think that's this opposition. You know, there doesn't have to be this opposition. Isn't there things that um, we can all agree on? This came to me during the, the this time of the Pluto-Uranus square. This came to me, and I may have said it before, you know. Um, nobody's going to say, I, I, I mean... It's, is it valuable, is it valuable to your cause or valu valuable for resolution or peace to just point, you know, get angry and shoot insults at somebody? Even if you can prove they're wrong, even if you say, look, here's the facts, no, what you're saying is false. Um, say it in a, in a way that's kinder. 
Because nobody's going to say, yeah, you're right, I'm a dumb fuck. You know, I'm sorry, excuse my French, but that's basically what it boils down to. You think you're, you're, you're changing anything by um, calling people dumb? And, you know, um, anybody can uh, be duped. Anybody can be, um, can misunderstand things. Um, more more understanding, more clarity, you know, saying, oh, you're so dumb because you believe this dumb stuff, it, it, that just makes them dig, Aries and Capricorn both very obstinate, it's a very obstinate dig, They're, look at their uh, animal representation, it's uh, Aries the ram and Capricorn the goat, these horned creatures, and what do horned creatures do? And they lock horns and they, you know, so, and this, that doesn't get you anywhere. Libra is all about, you know, sugar and spice and everything nice. That's what I just heard. You know, and that's not like Libras have little halos over their heads. <laughs> my daughters are Libras, my twin daughters, believe me. Libras have their moments too, but um, overall, the energy of Libra, the energy of Venus, which rules of Libra, you know, is love. Love is the answer, you know. Kindness is the answer. Gently bringing people around um, and, and being willing to listen, too. You know, I, I, being willing to listen. You can't just say, oh, you're, you're full of shit and I know everything. You're wrong and I'm, I'm right. You know, take the time to listen. Because there's concessions that everyone can make. And there's... Um, you know, there's always room for compromise. There's always room for, there's always room for kindness, you know. And that's the big message. Because it's a Libra full moon. Libra, is a, uh, the last one was like this too. It was just off here by itself, you know. Um, so Libra's over here by itself. And uh, up, well, look what it's up against, you know. It's trying to shine the light of Venus here. And then we also have um, Venus speaking of Venus, the ruler of Libra, the ruler of this full moon, has just moved into Taurus. It's, it's also, which is also the ruler, Venus rules over Taurus too, right? So it's in its nat one of its natural places, its natural home. So the energy of Venus could be really working, you know, it's like a little extra boost uh, for Venus. I feel like, um, just a little side astrology side note here, um, just like um, Scorpio used to be, the ruler of Mars was Scorpio and Mars and Aries, right? And then we discovered Pluto, and then, you know, so they, they change. And um, Saturn used to rule over Capricorn and Uranus, and then, um, I mean, and Aquarius, and then Uranus was discovered, you know, so then we know that it's Uranus. So one of these is going to change at some point in time. Because uh, Taurus and Libra both have the two rulers of, of Venus. And I, I feel like it's Taurus is going to be the one to change. Um, some people were saying it might be Vulcan, but maybe it's something we haven't discovered yet. And I've talked about this before. The only other one that has the, the dual rulership is Mercury. Rules Gemini and rules Virgo. And I think definitely Vesta is the ruler of, of Virgo. You know, So these, these change as time goes on. So Venus, if you're confused about, well, I thought Venus ruled Libra, it rules both in this year of 2018. Uh, but that may change. But now here's what how I uh, another little side astrology thing. I found that um, Venus and Taurus is music. Everybody, every really talented musician that I've ever known, either has uh, some kind of Taurus thing, or you know some kind of either through rulership or something. Like a Venus and Taurus person would be a, a musician for sure. They have Taurus sun or something like this. There's always some kind of strong Taurus in really good musicians. So v Taurus is more of a um, musician. And I always think of, um, too, Pan, even though Pan would probably be more Capricorn than the goat. But the horn, again, the horned creature playing the instrument. Whereas Venus expresses through Libra uh, more. Oh, the other thing before I move off, Venus and Taurus, uh, their voices. Taurians, that's how you can always peg a Taurus. They always have these sexy, mm, there's something in their voice that just, you know, makes makes me crazy, you know. <laughs> they always have this sexy voice, always great singers, and they always have this, the, their, something about their voice is so uh, alluring and enticing and pleasing, pleasing to the ears, you know, because it's mu they're musical, they're musical entities. Where Libra, I feel like the expression of Venus through Libra is more visual arts, and um, things you can see, 
you know, our visual arts, drawing, painting, sculpting, etc., but also interior design, uh, floral, you know, things that Libras make things look, express Venus uh, by making things look beautiful. And to some extent through words, like poetry and stuff like that. Where Taurus, it, it makes things uh, sound wonderful. Okay, maybe that's, a, if that's something. A little off topic again, but these little nuggets come through and let you, let you in on them. I let you in on my little nuggets. <laughs> if you're trying to learn astrology. Um, so Venus moving into Taurus, that's nice. Um, relating it to what I just said about the audio portion of, you know, how Venus is audio, audible. Uh, Venus and Taurus expresses audibly, let's say that. Um, you know, maybe kind words. Kind words can be exchanged, you know. Maybe you, instead of saying, you're a dumbass because you believe that, you could say, listen, you know, and speak um, in a more... Um, you know, a kinder way. I guess kind is just the easiest way to say it. Speaking of speaking, this Mercury is very much tied into this, the planet of speaking and communication. It's gone retrograde, so again, we could be revisiting the past in a big way. That could totally be happening, whether it's 1915 <laughs> or just uh, back to, you know, these, these past three few years with the Uranus-Pluto square. Um, uh, when you know better, you do better comes to mind, you know. Thinking back on those last few years uh, and arguments you've gotten into, political or otherwise, you know, um, or conflicts you've had, disagreements you've had, um, how could you say it better? And it's not good to just dwell in the past, and it's not to dwell in the past and beat yourself up over, over stuff, but it's to like, you know, when you know better, you do better. So going forward, how could I... Um, how could I express myself in a way, in a better way? How could I have said that better? And you can't go back and change how you said it in the past, but you can going forward. You know, move as we move forward, especially after Mercury goes direct, which, uh, let's might as well talk, see when that is, since we're talking about it. I, I, I was about to say I don't pay a lot of mind to Mercury, but every time I say I don't pay a lot of mind to Mercury, it comes up and bites me in the ass. So... <laughs> But I really don't. I'm not. I don't freak out. Oh, Mercury's retrograde. Don't stop my life. I don't do that. Uh, April fifteenth. It's going to go direct. Tax day. You know this is crazy a little bit, but my dad's showing up twice here. March thirty first was his birthday, and April fifteenth was the day that he died. And it's actually going to be twenty years uh, this year. He died ninety eight. April fifteenth of ninety eight. So that was kind of a little crazy, crazy thing that came up just for me personally, but maybe, maybe again, it's a message for somebody out there. We've got a lot of zeros, things that we've got, Pallas has gone zero, Gemini, Venus has gone zero, um, Taurus, Chiron is going to make the big shift here pretty soon, I don't have a Chiron ephemeris in front of me, and we've just coming out of the, on March 20th, the big equinox when Aries turns zero, so it's a time of turning corners, time of turning pages. By the way, you know, um, I started doing these new and mo full moon charts when I started on YouTube, you know. But my entire life doing astrology, I never did. But I always ran an equinox chart against my chart. And that's why, um, uh, that, and I've got a lot of value out of it. It kind of, it, it can show you this, the upcoming season of what's going to, what you might expect over the upcoming season. And, um... So it's valuable. And I, I was thinking about it because I was looking through these charts. I go, you know, I haven't ran an equinox chart forever. And I used to do that religiously. And I got a, a lot out of it. And I go, well, you know, maybe I should just offer it as a reading for people, you know. Um, this is 3C. I might as well just go ahead and show you real quick. The way this is set up, I have to get out of... They don't allow you to open dual folders. And it's in the same... Um, it's in the same uh, folder... Well, if you want to see, this is what it'll look like. If you go on my page, this is the little graphic that I did for it. And that's the actual chart of it. Um, but this is what you'll get. You'll get a bi wheel. Oh, and I'll talk about it. This will be your natal chart in the end. And this shows all the transits uh, to it. And there's some key things that are going on that day that I will talk about as it relates to your chart. And then the other thing that I'm going to do with that 
with that reading is I'm going to pull you an animal totem card also for the um, for the season. So pretty cool. This is the chart we were looking at, right? 3C, yeah. yeah if you, I don't know if you noticed, I run the whole year at one shot, so then they're just ready to go. I don't have to mess around with them. Yeah, so um, changes, turning corners, new beginning. It's a new season. In the northern hemisphere, it's the spring. You know, spring has sprung. Um, plants are blooming. Things are growing. Um, it's a time to turn over a new leaf. You know, it's a, it's a great time to turn over a new leaf. And there's going to be energy available to help us do that. Um, we will be revisiting the past, and we will be revisiting the Pluto-Uranus square in a big way. And there, there was, that could be real tumultuous. So think, while Mercury is retrograde, you know, um, how, during those times, or, or even if it's not those times, when dealing with conflict, when dealing with conflict, when dealing with disagreements, when dealing with difficult people and situations, how could you have handled that better? Ask yourself that. How could I have handled that better? And then try to apply it going forward. You know, try to really apply it going forward. I, I kind of think I got off track, but I've just been not engaging with that. You know, I see people, they're still posting things that I think are completely absurd and ridiculous and don't support their lot in life, you know, I, that, you know, I, I could, if I let it, I could get really pissed off at them, um, or I just keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling, like keep on trucking, <laughs> like keep on scrolling, you know, you don't have to engage in it, you know, um, it, it's like, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all, and another thing is, by, you know, by constantly giving attention and feeding the energy of um, what you don't want, you're only amplifying that, you know. So with the Libra full moon, find something positive to focus on. I know, you th oh, that's Pollyanna. That's sticking your head in the sand. No, that's shifting the energy towards uh, the positive. I, this came up in one of the readings, uh, that great um, old adage, uh, the Native American one, about which wolf do you feed? You know, the one promotes anger, resentment, and all that, and um, then the other one promotes love, peace, and understanding, and so on. You can look it up. Um, and it's like the kid is asking the elder, well, which one will win out? And he says, whichever one you feed. So by engaging with people and saying, no, 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 and getting our dander up and getting in a big argument about something, I mean, that doesn't, that's not accomplishing anything, right? Is, is that, well, that's something I've learned, okay? This is me talking. This is me going over some of my behaviors and getting really pissed off and blocking people, <laughs> unfriending and blocking them and, you know, doing, doing my feed and then I'm pissed off the whole day over something. Why? What, you know, why? Don't, I'm not going to let that happen anymore, you know? And uh, gentle persuasion. And now I'm hearing crystal blue persuasion. It's a good vibration. I will look that up real quick. Let's look up some lyrics. Because I am the rock and roll prophetess after all. Crystal blue persuasion. And uh, some people don't like this, but that's just how I roll. And um, I'm not just making this up. This, I've gotten crazy uh, cool messages through um, li song lyrics. I, I don't know if it's because half my uh, musician friends are passed on and it's actually them, or if it's just my guides in general know that's a language that I, you know, I can latch on to. Look over yonder, what do you see? The sun is arising, most definitely. A new day is coming. People are changing. Ain't it beautiful? Crystal blue persuasion. Better get ready to see the light. Ooh, I just got chills. Love, love is the answer. Didn't I already say that? And that is all right. So don't you give up now, so easy to find. Just look to your soul and open your mind. Yes. So, uh, see, this is perfect. Crystal Blue's Persuasion, it's a new vibration. Crystal Blue Persuasion. Maybe tomorrow, when he looks down on every green field in every town, all of his children and every nation, there'll be peace and good brotherhood. Crystal Blue Persuasion. Oh, I got, I don't, probably can't see, but my hairs are all standing on end. So it was definitely worth looking at, and it's exactly perfect um, 
for the Libra new full moon, you know. And it's exactly perfect for, you know, you could, this is going to be going on. It's always going on, but it's flaring up. <laughs> it's really, this could really flare up, you know. And uh, we, we can turn our attention to it and feed it, or we can look for the solutions and whatever, whatever I was just saying. Something else caught my eye here. That's why I kind of got off for a minute here. Yeah, Vesta is trining Uranus, but it's squ um, squaring um, Chiron. Yeah, Vesta, we want to make it. So, we want to make everything clean and new again. We want to feed everybody. We want everybody to be nurtured and taken care of. And I was going to mention this. I got off when we were talking about the zeros because zeros are critical degrees too. Twenty nine is the critical degree, but zeros are too. It's like a reset point. It's like a, and we're re we're reaching a reset point with this Chiron. And if you do order that Equinox reading, or if you just want to look at the Equinox, if you're knowledgeable about astrology, do it. It's it's worth doing. Look at it, uh, compare it to your chart. Um, when this Chiron goes into Aries, I'm not sure the date, if anybody knows that, we can uh, put it in the comments too, that's going to reignite that point, that zero Aries point, that cardinal um, ingress point. Um, the, the vernal equinox, in other words. So it's going to get, it's going to come up with the vernal equinox. I'm recording this prior to that, um, even though this is going to be a little bit later than that. And it's going to, um, it's going to, um, it's going to reignite it when that happens. Oh, I just realized that, that this is the wrong reading, but I'm going to save this and post it anyway that um, I'm actually recording this. I was meaning to record the new moon. I'm recording this early in March, but I'm going to save this. I'm going to put it up anyway, um, because I think that it's a good read on the chart regardless. Um, so I'm just going to, just, that just hit me. I just looked, I go, wait, March 31st. I just looked up in the 17th. We, I, I just skipped over one whole thing, uh, but that's okay. I'm going to put this up anyway. Uh, well, wait a couple of weeks. I'll just save it and I'll put it up anyway, because I think there's a lot of pertinent information here and a lot of good stuff here. Okay, so that's the uh, thing. I hopefully those readings will still be available at this time. Uh, I'll talk about them again. Uh, if you go to my website, uh, there's always some kind of readings available. Uh, I may not have it available much longer. Uh, at this, at the time that this reading posts, but you can always check out other stuff. I have art. See, Amazon. They sometimes they have my shirt ads here, and sometimes they don't. I have. It's it's very frustrating. But here's the uh, the ones that are my main the main thing, and then I have some empowerment women's ones too. Uh, usually I have a whole bunch. I have animal totems. They're all broken down, but these sometimes they're here and sometimes they're. They're just missing. Amazon just decides not to display them. <laughs> and it's nothing that I've done in the code. Oh, here, they're back. Oh, see? See what I'm talking about? It's crazy. So you, if it's here, you can go directly to, like, the Animal Totem ones, Women's Empowerment, the Astrology ones, the Mandala ones, and so on. I have readings available, mandalas, all sorts of stuff. So I know this reading might have been a little disjointed, but I think that some good stuff uh, came through anyway. So... I want to thank you all for everything you do to support me and my channel, including liking, sharing, commenting. Uh, remember that you are love and beauty incarnate. Have a great Libra um, full moon. I might, well, since this is, um, I'm not going to put this up for like a month. <laughs> Maybe I will do some little exploring of that 1915 uh, stuff on my, and put it in the description or something. Okay, but anyways, uh, if it's not there, for you, and if it, even if I do have something and you have further insights, you know, definitely throw them out there. Okay, so thanks everybody. Have a great full moon. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.